In this lecture, we set up the double integral for the surface area of the portion in the first octant of the plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 10. The purpose of this exercise is not to find the exact area of the surface. For the surface that we are given, there are very easy elementary techniques using triangles and polygons for finding the exact area of the surface. The purpose of this exercise is to show how to set up double integrals for the area of a surface. We will set up the double integral for the surface area in different ways. First, integrating with respect to x and y, then integrating with respect to x and z, and finally integrating with respect to y and z. To get a good idea as to how to set up the double integrals for the surface area, we first make a sketch of the surface. Since the surface is a portion of the plane, we look for three non-collinear points on the plane. Let's try the x, y, and z intercepts of the plane. If these don't work, then we'll look for other points. For the x-intercept, we set both y and z equal to zero in the equation of the plane. And we get x equals 10 thirds. For the y-intercept, this time, we set x and z equal to 0, and we get y equals 5. For the z-intercept, we set x and y equal to 0 in the equation, and we get z equals 10. So the intercepts of the plane are three non-collinear points. These non-collinear points determine a unique triangle which also lies on the plane. And not only that, this triangle happens to bound the region of the plane in the first octant. If the surface is given parametrically as the vector function r of u v, where x, y, and z are all functions of u and v, then we can write the surface area as the double integral over the surface of the magnitude of the cross product of r sub u and r sub v integrated with respect to u and v. Here, r sub u and r sub v are the partial derivatives of r with respect to u and v. Suppose that we can solve for one of the variables in terms of the other two. Let's say we can write z in terms of x and y. u and v are equal to x and y respectively, and r of u v becomes r of x y. r of x y is equal to the vector x y z of x y. And so the surface area is equal to the double integral over the surface S of the magnitude of the cross product of R sub X and R sub Y integrated with respect to X and Y. One can show as an easy exercise that the cross product of R sub X and R sub Y is the vector minus Z sub X minus Z sub Y 1. We solve for Z in the equation of the plane. We find that Z is equal to 10 minus 3X minus 2Y. The derivative of z with respect to x is minus 3, and the derivative of z with respect to y is minus 2. And we have the cross product of r sub x and r sub y. The magnitude of the cross product of r sub x and r sub y is the square root of the square of z sub x plus the square of z sub y plus 1. With the cross product being the vector 3, 2, 1, the magnitude is the square root of 9 plus 4 plus 1. And this is equal to the square root of 14. And so we have the preliminary form for the double integrals for the surface area when we integrate with respect to x and y. We just have to choose the order of integration and the corresponding limits of integration. Regardless of the order of integration, and because the variables of integration are x and y, we have to take a look at the xy plane. We examined what's called the projection of the surface onto the xy plane. The projection of the surface onto the xy plane is the region on the xy plane that is directly below the surface. This projection happens to be the base of the tetrahedron formed by the portion of the surface in the first octant and the coordinate planes. For the first double integral where we have y as the first variable of integration, we follow the y direction within the projection. We determine from what curve to what curve the region goes. Observe that the region goes from a segment on the x-axis to a portion of the trace of the plane on the x-y plane. We solve for y on these two curves. On the x-axis, where the region starts, 
y is equal to 0. The second curve is part of the intersection between our plane and the xy plane. That intersection, which is a line, is also called the trace of our plane on the xy plane. On the xy plane, z is equal to 0, and so the equation of the trace is 3x plus 2y equals 10. We solve for y and get y equals 5 minus 3x over 2. We don't need it at the moment, but we can solve for x and find that x is equal to the quantity 10 minus 2y all over 3. The formulation for y on this trace gives us the upper limit of integration for y. Because x is the last variable of integration, we simply have defined the maximum and minimum values of x within the projection. The minimum value of x is 0 at the origin and on the y-axis. The maximum value is 10 thirds at the x-intercept. And so we have the limits of integration for x. For the surface area, integration with respect to y goes from 0 to 5 minus 3x over 2. Integration with respect to x goes from 0 to 10 thirds. Square root of 14 is a constant which we take out of the double integral. We switch the order of integration so that this time x is the first variable of integration. We look for the bounds for x. This time we follow the x direction on the projection. Again, we look for bounding curves, but this time along the x-direction. Observe that the projection starts at the segment on the y-axis, and finishes at the segment which is a portion of the trace of the plane on the xy-plane. We solve for x on these two curves. x is 0 on the y-axis. On the trace, we had found earlier that x is equal to the quantity 10 minus 2y all over 3 and we have the limits of integration for x. For the limits of integration for y, we look for the minimum and maximum values of y within the projection. The minimum value of y is 0 at the origin and on the x-axis. The maximum value is 5 at the y-intercept. And here is the double integral for the surface area where we integrate with respect to x first followed by integration with respect to y. We leave the evaluation of these double integrals as an exercise for the viewer. The value of these integrals is equal to 25 times the square root of 14, all over 3. Suppose we now integrate with respect to x and z. We have to examine the projection of the surface onto the x-z plane. Because of the change in the variables of integration, we have to use a different parameterization for the surface. Let the vector function corresponding to this parameterization be lowercase s of x and z. Under this parameterization, x will be equal to x, and z will be equal to z. y will be in terms of x and z, and so we solve for y in the equation of the plane y turns out to be the quantity 10 minus 3x minus z all over 2. Using the vector function lowercase s, the surface area is then equal to the double integral over the surface capital S of the magnitude of the cross product of s of x and s of z integrated with respect to x and z. Lowercase s of x is the vector 1 y sub x 0 lowercase s of z is the vector 0, y sub z, 1. The cross product is y sub x minus 1, y sub z. The magnitude is the square root of the square of y sub x plus 1 plus the square of y sub z. The partial derivative of y with respect to x is minus 3 halves, and the partial derivative of y with respect to z is minus 1 half. And so the magnitude of the cross product is the square root of 9 fourths plus 1 plus 1 fourth. This is equal to the square root of 14 over 2. 
Since we are integrating with respect to x and z, we examine the projection of the surface on the xz plane. Suppose we integrate with respect to z first. We follow the z direction on the xz projection and find the bounding curves for the projection. Observe that the xz projection is bounded below by a segment on the x-axis and bounded above by a portion of the xz trace of our plane. On the xz plane, y is equal to 0, so that the equation of the xz trace is 3x plus z equals 10. Since z is the first variable of integration, we solve for z. z is equal to 10 minus 3x. And later, when we switch the order of integration, we will need x in terms of z. x is equal to 10 minus z all over 3. If z is the first variable of integration, z goes from 0 to 10 minus 3x. Because x is the last variable of integration, we'll look for the minimum and maximum values of x within the xz projection. The minimum value of x is 0 at the origin and on the z-axis. The maximum value is 10 thirds at the x-intercept. And so here is the double integral for the area of the surface when we integrate with respect to z first, followed by integration with respect to x. We switch the order of integration so that now x is the first variable of integration. This time we follow the x direction and look for the bounding curves of the xz projection. Observe that the region starts on the z-axis, where x is equal to 0. The other bounding curve is on the xz trace, where x is equal to the quantity 10 minus z all over 3. The minimum value of z is 0 at the origin and on the x-axis. The maximum value is 10 at the z-intercept. And so the surface area is also equal to this double integral. One can check easily that both these integrals are equal to 25 times the square root of 14 all over 3. And so now we set up the double integrals for the area of the surface, this time integrating with respect to y and z. So we turn our attention to the projection of the surface on the yz plane. We set up a different vector function for the surface. We call this vector function t of yz. This time, we solve for x in terms of y and z. The variables y and z, which are acting as parameters, will just be themselves. From the equation of the plane, we find that x is equal to the quantity 10 minus 2y minus z all over 3. The surface area, then, is equal to the double integral of the magnitude of the cross product of t sub y and t sub z we integrate with respect to y and z. As an exercise for the viewer, the viewer can check that the magnitude of the cross product of t sub y and t sub z is equal to the square root of 1 plus the square of x sub y plus the square of x sub z. The derivative of x with respect to y is minus 2 thirds, and the derivative of x with respect to z is minus 1 third. And so the magnitude of the cross product of t sub y and t sub z is equal to the square root of 1 plus 4 ninths plus 1 ninth. This is equal to the square root of 14 over 3. And so the surface area is equal to the double integral of the square root of 14 over 3, and we integrate with respect to y and z. If the first variable of integration is y, then we must follow the y direction on the projection. The projection starts on the z-axis, where y is equal to 0, and finishes on the trace of the plane on the yz plane. On the yz plane, x is equal to 0, so that the equation of the trace is 2y plus z equals 10. Solving for y, we get y equals 5 minus z over 2. z, on the other hand, is 10 minus 2y. The minimum value of z is 0 at the origin and on the y-axis. The maximum value of z is 10 at the z-intercept. 
And so we have another formulation for the double integral for the surface area. Switching the order of integration so that now z is the first variable of integration, we follow the z direction on the projection. Observe that z starts at 0 on the y-axis and finishes on the trace on the projection. On the trace, z equals 10 minus 2y. The minimum value of y on the projection is 0 at the origin and on the z-axis. The maximum value is 5 at the y-intercept. And so we have the final double integral for the surface area. The viewer can check that these two integrals are equal to 25 times the square root of 14 all over 3.